Hello World America. My name is Bruce. And this is my roommate right here. What's your name? Gary. This is Gary. We ain't gonna give out our last names because that could be kind of dangerous. But anyway. But look here. We're here to tell you our story. We're right here in your living room. Because we here, we don't want this to happen to you. So pay attention. Because this could be you. And we don't want this to be you. We did everything to avoid it and still got caught. And we still got caught. But now we're trying to change it. And we're trying to make somebody listen. We can't get nobody to listen. So maybe you listen. And you be the judge. Okay, now. We're going to start like this. We got two different... This is, this is, 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 is a, it, actually, it's a, it's a landlord situation. I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay? It's a rental situation. And it's kind of like a double management thing. So it's two people involved in here. So you really got to pay attention what we're going to take you with this. So I got my part of the story. He's going to have his part of the story. But you got to get inside our lives. If you can't get inside our lives... You will never understand what we're going through or where we've been through. And we don't know what's ahead, but maybe you'll get it. And maybe you might want to join in and do something about this situation. Okay, check this out now. I've been with this particular landlord two years. Matter of fact, more than two years. Okay? Now, when I first moved with this landlord... I was with her over a year. I'm just going to skip through this. I ain't going to tell you the whole story because I ain't trying to bore you. Because you get bored after a while. I know how y'all get, get bored and all that kind of stuff. So we ain't going to bore you. Let's check it out now. Okay, now I'm going to move it on a little bit. So what happened was we had a little problem at this house over there. Okay? And uh, there was a kind of like I say, like a complaint on her. So the building inspectors came out. She had to move everybody out because she had some violations on her. I wonder if we should say her name. I think we should. It's very important. Well, if my man here said we should start calling names, well, we're going to start calling names. Let me see. We think her name was Miss Georgia Adams. Miss Georgia Adams. Miss Georgia Adams. Now, we ain't saying nothing bad. Now, I ain't saying she was bad and all that. I ain't saying she was evil for her. But we got saying, done wrong. We're just saying what she, what, what. What she does and how it affected us. Yeah, how it affected us. Now, it might not affect nobody else because everybody is different, but it affected us. So, we're going to tell you our story, how it affected us. Okay, now, I'm over here now. We got uh, this complaint on her over here at this house over here, this one house. So, she had to relocate everybody. So, she was kind enough, you know, because I pay my rent every month on time. I'm a good tenant. I pay my rent. I ain't got a problem paying my rent. So she relocated me to another property that she had, which is very nice of her. Nice house. I'm saying the house, the house, you know, ain't bad. Nice house, you know. I feel comfortable. I slept good the first night I was here. So anytime you go somewhere and sleep first good first night, you're good. So anyway, it happened to me. So anyway, uh, so what happened was, before I moved with Miss Georgia Adams, I had Comcast cable. Okay, now when Miss we move over here, just like this man right here, the same thing, she agreed to pay cable. Now, hold on. Okay, I had Comcast cable. Okay, so what happened was, when I moved to the new location, we didn't have Comcast cable. There was no cable there. So now, what she usually do, she got, she got property. Now, every house that she, other house that she has, this, this, this in America, every other house that this lady has, she pay cable bill. She pays it. That's the way it goes. Put in with your rent. That's cool. I like that, man. Hey, save me some money. So anyway, when I relocated to the new house, there was no cable there. It was a problem there. See, because the cable company that she had, they couldn't hook up the cable because there was a tree out there. A tree. Now, don't get your mind and start tripping about trees. Because I know how y'all get the thing of trees. Now, I ain't that the kind of tree. But anyway, there's a tree out there blocking the signal. So they couldn't hook up the cable. So what she did was, she asked me, and kind me, you know, I'm so kind. Hey, Bruce, can you transfer your cable service over here and not pay the cable bill for a year? Hey, me, my good old hearty, yeah, no problem. You know, we got four people over there, man. There's no TV in there. Nobody had no TV. When I got here, there was no TV. Man, them people were so happy when I came up in there. They said, man, you a savior. 
Because you saved us, man. We ain't got no TV. So I was kind enough, yeah, to hook up the cable. So anyway, I, you know, we started having that problem. People didn't want to start to pay. But anyway, we, we came up with the cable bill. But anyway, the cable bill, man, man, got so high. Man, that cable bill got to over $500. Anyway, I'm going to show you. Five, well, that's the cable, but I don't know if you can see it, but man, I'm telling you, man, that cable, I ain't gonna lie to you. I think I, I showed you some time before, but man, that cable went up to $500, okay? Now, here's the receipt, though. I'm, I'm gonna skip a little ahead, because I've been at this house over a year, okay? But she only paid the cable bill twice. Now, I'm telling you, man, did, she paid twice when it came out of her bank account. So that proves that she agreed to pay the cable bill from the start because she paid from a checking account. Man, I found out the information because I called Comcast Cable and they told me it was paid from the checking account from hers. So anyway, she came back to me, man, and said, you know what, Bruce, the cable bill is too high, I ain't gonna pay it no more. You guys pay it. I'm like, what? So anyway, the bill ended up getting $500, man. I'm telling you, back in October, I'm gonna skip a little ahead now. October 2015, see, I paid my rent right there. Paid my rent. And she wrote right down there at the bottom of there where she was going to start agreeing to pay me $50 back from the rent. $50 off for the cable bill from 2014. That is her signature where I paid my rent. See? The rent amount right there. You see it? Okay, she was taking off for the cable bill. Okay, right there. You see it? $50 a month. That's her signature. Everything right there. Now, Okay, we're going to move a little bit ahead now. Okay, you got that point. Now, what happened after that was, oh, wait a minute. Oh, she got another complaint on this house from a building inspector, man. Now, me and this man had nothing to do with that complaint. You know who is here, but we had nothing to do with that complaint. Isn't that right? That's, that's absolutely true. Uh, this lady owns many homes, and, and her... her uh the way she operates is, is she goes in and tears everything out and creates little 10 by 10 cubicles and in some houses has like 8 little 10 by 10 cubicles and rents them out to disabled, poor disabled people and um, and that's how she makes her money. The thing is, she never in any of these houses applied for a building permit or checked with the authorities as, as to whether it was okay because she knew it wasn't. She knew it was illegal. But that's, she, she, she has this all under a trust, a... a uh, an irrevocable, she has all her properties under, an, under an irrevocable trust. She, she inherited millions of dollars a few years ago, and, and so she has a, an irrevocable trust and doesn't think that uh, anybody can in any way harm her uh, legally if she does anything wrong. So she just does what she wants. There you go. Now, okay, so anyway, so there's another part. See, this house right here, she got in trouble for. She built on uh, two bedrooms to the house. There was... You know, was it not unpermitted? She didn't get a permit for that. But anyway, that's okay. But anyway, that's what happened with this house. So anyway, the two guys that made the complaint had to move out. See, they messed up themselves because their rooms was the ones that was built upon, was added on rooms. They turned the living room and the dining room and into bed bedrooms. See, me and this man had legal rooms, so we didn't have to go anywhere. So we did nothing wrong. See, we was okay. So anyway, man, what happened was. She, I guess, decided to sell the house. Then she changed her mind, said no. she ain't selling the house. Exactly. Wait a minute. Okay, we're going to back that, up, because I might be skipping a little something. Well, that kind of brings to where I came in in mm -hmm. August. Oh, yeah, matter of fact, let me back up. See, I was here for a year. He's been here for, like, how many months? Since last August of last year. Right, so that means I was here a little bit longer than this man was seven right months, here. Seven months. seven months. See, so they're trying to make it look like we were together. So we're going, you're going to break it down for you. You're going to see you gonna, we're going to break it down for you. Okay, now, so anyway, um, two, 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 two separate times. Now, you got that? Two separate times. Not the same time. Two separate times. Okay, so anyway, when this man moved in, she had an ad in the paper, the same order now, Miss Georgia Adams we're talking about. Remember now, there's going to be two owners in the situation on this thing, so you got to pay attention. So I'm going to slow down a little bit because I might be talking a little bit too fast. I don't want you to have to hit rewind. And say, let me see what that man said again. Nope, we're going to slow it down for you before you can get it. Okay, when he moved in, she had an ad in the paper. Cable bill paid. Utilities paid. And? And? When? Now, 
Now we've come up to, I met this lady July 29th mm -hmm. of last year by an ad in the paper. I was trying to move to some other location. I met her and she took me to three locations and all three locations were houses, as I said, tiny little bedrooms, um, with walls torn down, the living rooms had been removed and converted. Uh, everywhere she could put a bedroom, she did, in all three houses. And I knew the place to go, so I, I made arrangements with her that day. We went to my payee service, and I made arrangements with her that day through my payee service to start paying her my rent uh, with uh, the money being deposited directly into her account August 3rd. August 1st, she calls me and, and says uh, she's not going to be able to let me move in on the 3rd, that she's feeling sick, she has to go to the hospital, blah, 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 and kept postponing my moving in. And it was finally August 16th before I got moved into a location of hers. And the one she moved in, me into it was the one where Bruce is, but it's not one of the ones I had seen. Did she have a pro uh, how do you call it, probate your rent? Did be she do that for you? Because I came in on the 15th, she promised me that uh, when she got my rent check, because it had been lost in the mail, she said, but when it was, it was reissued and re-cleared, that she would give me back half the rent since I was coming in mm -hmm. on half the month. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, well, that, that's, that's, that's fine, that's perfect, that's perfect. So it was, um, it took six weeks for that check to be rewritten and re-cleared. So I was here for almost six weeks before that occurrence happened, which was um, uh, August, it was September 15th when she got that check. Mm. So when she got it, I called her up that week because I was expecting it. I called my payee service and they, rather they called me and said, Gary, we've, we've cleared up that rent deal with, with, with Miss Adams and so everything's okay. I, so I called Miss Adams and, uh, on Wednesday and just asked her, how, had she heard anything? And she said, no, she hadn't heard anything. And I called her on Thursday, I had her, no, I haven't heard anything. I called her on Friday and I said, I understand that um, you, the money was received by you on Wednesday. She said, let me call you right back. I'll go home and check. I don't think so, but let me go check. So she, she called me back later that evening at 5.30 and, and told me that, now let me back up. In that six-week six week period that I was here, I, I had gone to her and asked her if I could have yard sales here. And she said, absolutely, that'd be a great thing. Go ahead, do it, have, you can do anything you want as long as you pay your rent. So a friend of mine and, and, and I had some things in storage and because we do, we do yard sales. And we started bringing, we got it over here, all set up, our inventory, and the first thing we had was a problem with one of the other tenants because he and he, he and Miss Georgia had been whispering and talking back and forth about my, my activities, and, and he was saying things about, that he had no business saying about. He got, tried to get involved in my business, and I tried to stop it, which I did. I did so by calling Miss Adams. And her answer was to me that she didn't know anything about this, and that she would be out the next morning to straighten this up. She never showed. Um, things got went to, to worse between me and this guy, and um, not me. No, no, not, the other not, guy. Not, not the other guy that, that didn't like me having a yard sale here, um, and um, so that was. Um, I, I, I my track. Okay, now uh, okay, I'll go. He gonna get back on track, but check this out. I'm gonna tell you what happened to him though. Oh, when he moved in here. Right. Okay. She come over here with her worker. Threaten this man. She, she, after this we got man. everything here, after we got everything here, she came over here and saw what we had and said, and said that, um, that, no, she didn't, this, she couldn't allow this and, and for us to pack everything up and get it out of here. And she, at the same time, gave me a, a 48 a, hour notice talking about breach of contract. Told me I had a breach of and contract. Get out! And it was, wasn't using the common areas right and I'd broken the rental agreement and she wanted me out of here in 48 hours. And that was on Friday of that week. And so the first thing we did was we packed everything up. We were waiting for a friend of ours to bring a truck big enough to move everything out where she showed up the following morning with a trailer and demanded that I put everything on that trailer and she take it away. And I explained to her, no ma'am, my mover will be here 2.30 this afternoon. She showed up at 2.15 wanting to know where my mover was. Well, he had called, said he was going to be late and we weren't going to do it until that, that evening. At that point, but she wouldn't listen to me. She, she, she pulled the trailer in the driveway and took, demanded that we load everything on, on this trailer. It looked like a U-Haul trailer, and that she would be back in the morning to help us move it back to our to our storage unit. The following morning, she shows up at, at 6:30 in the morning and is hooking her vehicle up to that trailer filled with all of our possessions on it. And it was a 
I believe a six by 16 foot trailer piled five foot high, and, and uh, quite a bit of, um, of inventory. And she she loaded that she loaded that thing up, and I came out and wondered what she's doing. And she she told me that she's going to take it to our storage unit. I said, whoa. And we were waiting for my partner to get here, and she won't be here until 10 o'clock. You said morning, you didn't say 6.30. She says, well, we're going to go have breakfast, and then we'll be back. And drove off with our stuff. Yep, took and it. Took it. Came back, came back. So I went to my bedroom, calling my roommate, and I'm sitting in there relaxing, and there's a tap on my door. I said, come in, and her boyfriend, a great big tall ex-convict black man, came in and literally verbally attacked me. Now, I don't know if it's a boyfriend. Now, we don't know for sure, but Sorry. we don't know where they work together. Well, they're together all the time. All the time, but we don't know. I don't anyway, know. I don't want to get anybody in trouble, because I don't know. He started leaning over me and threatening me, and, and, and so I said, well, let's take it outside, because I wanted to call the police. I couldn't do it from in here, because my phone wouldn't make the call. So I said, let's take it outside. As we go outside, he starts screaming at me and threatening me. I just sat down and let it happen, hoping he wouldn't hit me. And all the neighbors are out looking, and he's screaming, and she's egging him on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so I just sat there waiting. Well, it was a Sunday, and they knew, I wasn't aware of it, but they knew that Bruce wasn't here because he was gone that day, and they knew the other room, it was in church. They knew I was here by myself. And tried everything they could to get me to move out right then and there, or certainly by that, that evening. If not, they were coming back with some people to hurt me. And... Um, then Bruce showed up and I explained to him what was going on. He said, oh, no, is it? Hey, uh-huh. And so I talked over with, with Bruce and, and decided, normally I remove myself from any situation like that, and just so it doesn't, there are no physical problems or, or, or legal problems like that, but I, I ended up staying. And so she, that's when she, um, uh, they jumped in the truck and took off with our stuff. And yep. And we haven't seen it since. Uh, as we understand, she took it. She does this to people, we understand, and has done it before, to furnish all of she, she wanted me to get my stuff here, not, not for me to have a yard sale. She knew she wasn't going to let me have it. Just to get that stuff here so she could get her hands on it, to furnish her other houses, of which she has many. And that's where our stuff went, evidently. Um, Good. He don't have it. And what else happened? That's really sad what happened to him. So you need what, to really get inside. So, so I went and got a lawyer. At that, at that point, to explain to him what, what was going on, and I, I signed him up, this is the paperwork that I signed him up on October 6th, I signed his lawyer, and he, at that time, informed me to send him any and all paperwork I received, and he would tell me and guide the case, and he was going to do this pro bono, because he had felt deeply that I had been wrong, and he could do something about it, and was going to get the money out of her. That never quite materialized. He, he um, somewhere along the line, he lost interest, and, and because he lost interest, it couldn't have been me, couldn't it? You know, I wouldn't. Have went, I mean, in fact, that is true because I went in it. See what she would call the name? Who? She would tell Yeah, yeah. I went in myself, and I had to talk with Mr. Matthew Brady. He's a nice guy. I'm not saying he was a nice guy, but I never signed anything with him. But he assured that he was going to help us in there. Because he called the other individual to talk to them on the telephone. Now, to the so new individual. He ensured to me that, hey, man, hey, I'm going to help you guys out. We're going to go after them because you guys was done wrong. And, 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 right. and, and, and we believed him. We trusted in him. Just like you got to trust your landlord. Let me tell you something real quick. You know some, You know the main person you need to trust? You need to trust somebody. You got to trust your landlord. Let me tell you why you got to trust your landlord. Because they got your key. They got keys to your house. So don't you think you should be really nice and really respectful to your landlord? See, that's what we was. We were nice to our landlord. Because why? They had keys to our house. And that's how she got inside the house and stole my restraining order that was found on me on this house that was full of lies. Because I asked her, I said, Miss Georgia, where's my restraining order? Oh, I took it. What? Why are you coming in my house taking stuff that do not belong to you? And then you're going to admit to me that you have it. So we can't get no attorney in America to listen to this kind of stuff. So we have to come here on this table, lay all the paperwork down right here, and give it to America. Because, see, we can't explain it to you like this on the telephone. Because they ain't got that kind of time on the telephone. 
you get to try to talk to a lawyer on the telephone, man, you ain't got that much time. If you look, so, at, if you look in the yellow pages under attorneys, uh, the ones that handle handle rentals or landlords, ten percent of them only talk to renters. The other ninety percent handle landlords. And can you believe and there's the one going on there? The handle, handle renters don't want to deal with the complications this woman has, has got going. Can you believe there's a we seen a man that has forty three thousand evictions. Forty three thousand. Now I just like to the know the attorney she's using has, uh, has his record. I, the, the one that what I would like to know. I bet it's forty two thousand nine hundred of them. No, it's forty two thousand nine hundred and ninety nine of them probably didn't know how to fight back. See, but we're going to be fight back, though. And probably they didn't know how to fight back. So there's, four, there's 42,000 people out there on the street. 43,000 people as to homeless. The, as to the new owner, when I arrived here in August, there was a for sale sign on the front, uh, on the front fence. And I asked her about that. I said, Miss Adams, I said, why did you move me to a house that you're selling? She said, oh, no, we're not selling out. We're just trying to get investors. And so we, we run them through this, this uh, real estate company, which uh, it seems kind of shaky. But that's what she swore down. She wasn't selling the place. Well, as soon as this problem. So so when she told me, gave me the first note and told me I had to move out, her reasoning to me was because, she, and this is the story she told me that night, that when she called me back that night and told me that rather than tell me about the 300 that she owed me, she starts in that she wants me out of here and I got to go because she said that the people who, the finance company that's financing this, drove by and saw all my yard sale stuff out there and demanded that it be removed from the property and anybody who had anything to do with it. Well, I don't, I don't, at this point I'm not believing anything she's saying. I, I, I don't believe, I don't believe that occurred like that. But she said that was the reason that, that she had that I had to go because because I had uh, just I had uh, not used the common areas correctly and so I was in breach and uh, oh, and because the finance company wanted whoever was attached to that out of here um, and so that was the first the first one I had twelve hours to get out she gave me three of these breach notices one was for twelve hours that weekend one was for thirty hours and one was for forty eight hours and I. I I didn't know which one to respond to. I was trying to get out of here as best I could, at least get everything out from the yard sale that she told me I could have, that we couldn't have. Um, it was, it's just been one um, dead-end street to another with her. I never got my 300 back, and the same thing is true. When I got here, there was, she had all her other houses she showed me, she told me, and my understanding was, that cable came with it, and it's very important to me to have, have cable. And, but when I got here, there was no TV, there was no cable. All there was was an ongoing problem. And I called her up, and she, she just as much said, well, you know, nothing I can do about that. If you want it, if you want it you're going to you're gonna have it hooked up for yourself. You know why there was no cable here? Because the guy that here ran the bill up on me for $500 that she was supposed to have me pay. She never and, paid it. And threatened that's him. And threatened why him. And that's why he got no cable here. And that's why he got a, a, a restraining order against these people because they were threatening him and trying to get physical with him. So that's why he got a restraining order, which Miss Adams didn't particularly care for, so she removed it from the premises. Yeah, can you believe that man? She she wait came a minute. in here. These we, people wait a minute now. These people threat they went down there. Daniel and this guy named Joe. Uh -huh. Went down to that courthouse down there. Carol Miller, man, they went down to that Carol Miller down there. I don't know what they told them people down there. They went down there and told them people I threatened to kill them over a cable bill. Wait a minute. Me? Threatening to kill you over a cable bill? I wasn't supposed to be responsible for the cable bill in the first place. Why would I want to threaten you over a cable bill when I told them, I said, that's exactly what I told them. I said, no, you don't have to pay me because I'm going to get my money from Miss Georgia anyway. Because I'm going to let her know you didn't pay me. So I'm going to take my money out of the cable bill anyway. I'm going to go get my money. So why would I want to go around threatening them? You don't you know that courtroom granted them that restraining order? And the sheriff came by here to put me out. And I told that sheriff, I go, look here, sheriff. I said, man, no people slept in they lied up in there. And I sat up there and I talked to him for a few minutes. He told me, he go, you know what, mister? I'm going to give you a chance. I ain't going to put you out. I'm going to give you time to move. And you know what happened? It came out, I was telling the truth. Because that guy, both them guys who told that lie, they're no longer here. I'm still here. This same house. 
in the same house. One of the guys that had the, the last guy that had to leave was Joe, Joe, and he had to leave because the complaints he filed with the building department and the, and code enforcement against Miss Adams uh, um, made his bedroom illegal to live in. And in point, since I have moved in here, since I've been here, and prior and prior when when Bruce got here, this house is legally uninhabitable. We have problem. We have. No plumbing in our kitchen or our bathroom, nor have we had since I got here. No, no drainage in the sinks. The, the toilet flops all over the place and doesn't flush. Um, the kitchen sinks have no drains connected. We have roaches everywhere. Outside, there's no lighting. If you go out at night, you're gonna you're gonna fall and hurt yourself because it's all different levels. Um, all these things we have found out make this place uninhabitable. Plus, I have. My rental agreement with Miss Adams um, states emphatically and verbally emphatically that if for any reason it states when I rent it from her, it says uh, 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 Georgia Adams Georgia Adams agrees to return all funds to my business management corporation in the event Gary Burn Hackman is no longer living at this at this address. Which is the one that I rented, tried to rent, but I never lived there at all. I was never there once. And and by this agreement, she owes me, she owes me my money back because she never took me to where she was supposed to take me. So and so, but you can sit there and say, you know what, man, you can be happy that you got your place all you want to. Now you can think that all you want, but that's not what the paperwork says. Well, and the so other, we need to stick to what the paperwork says. Because she signed it. So, that is the kind of points we make. And, let me tell you something else. Now, after, I look, and it's getting late now because I know we want to move on because we want to break it down to you because we want you to feel what we are feeling. Now, as you know, you got this first part. Now, we're going to try to move on to this second part because now this other, there's a situation here. See, because Mr. Apparently we got served a 30-day notice here in October 2015. Now I want you to understand this now. We got a notice 2015, okay, 30 days notice now. Okay, I want you to pay attention. Now, according to this notice that we got 2015 in October, apparently we supposed to have it moved out in November. Let's say we got a notice. October the 11th, 2015. So 30 days from October 11th, 2015 would be November 11th, 2015, right? 30 days, right? Okay. So if that Our seems record. to be true, why would I have to pay November's rent? Why did the landlord come by here, Miss Georgia Adams, come by here on the 4th of November Collected rent when I supposedly had got a 30 day notice to move out in October, right? She still came and collected rent in November. Now, when she collected that rent in November, mm -hmm. she came back on the 5th the next day and served us a 30 day notice. She collected her out. rent and then one day Said and the next day collected. She sold the house. Right. And that we had to move out. Okay? Now, this is in December. Now, after she did this, after she came and gave us this 30 day notice, she came in here and took out all the furniture, man. She took the couches, she took the refrigerators, she took all our food and just stored it on the, the floor. Right. She took the washer, she took the dryer. She didn't leave she us nothing in here. Okay? Screaming and threatening. And so we would serve that. So what I'm trying to say is, man, basically, first of all, we don't think it's quite fair. Well it's not legal. It's not by their by their rules. Uh, okay, well legal or not, because it seems like the court system and nobody wanna hear it, so it's legal to them. But what I'm saying is, man, I don't we don't think it's quite fair that we had to pay rent in November and get served a 30-day notice wow. on the 5th, hold on, saying that the house is sold. 
That's like a short sale to me. And and after that, we talked to the new owner, Mr. Fred Lee. Works for the county. He came by here. Several times we had many conversations with Mr. Lee on the telephone. Okay? So what happened was, Mr. Lee came by, Mr. Lee said, hey, I, mean, I need you guys to move out. So we made an agreement with Mr. Lee, though. We made an agreement with Mr. Lee. We were working with Mr. Lee. Hey, Mr. Lee, we need to leave after the New Year's, man. After the holidays, it's close to the holidays. Give us a lease after the holidays, man. You know, we, we will work with you. He said, okay, man, we'll give you to after the holidays. So, December, I say, uh, hey, oh, by the way, Mr. Lee, I need to go to, I, I, need, I think about going to Arizona, man, I need to go to Arizona. He go, no, I don't think that would be a good idea. So he didn't say anything about to it by then after that. He said, well, I'll get back to you. He said, not right now. I said, I have to get back to you. He said, right now, I don't think it would be a good idea. So this is in December. Okay, the month of January, we didn't hear nothing from Mr. Lee. From the whole month of January, we hear nothing from Mr. Lee. I don't wait on Mr. Lee to come out here to collect some rent or do something. Let me know something, man. Tell me, okay, go on to Arizona, man, and come on back. I give you time. I ain't hear nothing from Mr. Lee. He ain't hear nothing from Mr. Lee the whole month of January. Here come February now. Man, Mr. Lee calls me. I'm at the laundromat. Mr. Lee calls me up. He goes, hey, Bruce. You know, every time the time Mr. Lee will call, he goes, hey, man, how you guys doing? How's the house? Man, everything okay. Sometimes they come by here and check on us. You know, they come in, we let them in. You know, the house, you know, the house is cool. You know, everything's okay. Everybody's smiling. Everybody's happy. So we had many conversations with this new owner. So, anyway, he called me at the laundry mat, man. He goes, hey, Bruce, how's everything at the house? He goes, did you or Gary file a complaint on me? I go, nah, man, me and Gary ain't found no complaint on you, man, down there at the uh, building inspecting place. He go, yeah. He go, yeah, you did. He go, somebody did. He go, e either you or Gary did. He said, I'm not too happy. You see, the government's involved. Everybody involved. I'm in trouble. I'm oh, talking about me. Him. You know, he talking about he's in trouble. I ain't too happy with you guys. Now I'm going to have to come after you guys. So I'm trying to explain to him, hey, man, this is something that happened before when there was two other complaints. That other complaint got switched over to you. Because you the new owner, they must have switched that complaint over to you and you got the blame for it. I tried to explain that to him. He didn't want to listen. So then after that, man, come March, we we the next thing we know, we getting the sermons in the mail. To the date, fiction. To date, Mr. Lee has not done the improvements, the, the code requirement people require, which no. makes the place uninhabitable. It's, Again. it's still an open case over on, on, on this house. Uh, we got the paperwork somewhere. But anyway, there's a still open case on this house. I'm trying to, I'm trying to skip over it because I don't want to bore you. I don't want to take over an hour to try to get this stuff out. So we're trying to stick to the, the main... Uh, we'll stick to the main thing. Let, let me say something, please. Okay, so what we have going on here then, as you can see, is um, legal threats from the owner we rented from who at one point just up and sold this and turned it over to somebody else, he picked up where she left off by filing the unlawful detainer against us in January, which, as we understand it, this place was sold in what they call a quick sale or a short sale, which we were told by the legal clinic that that being the case, he has to start the paperwork from the beginning. He has to come back and start. If, if it was a quick sale, which it was a short sale, him being the new owner, can't use these previous forms and, and threats that Miss Georgie gave us. He has to start the whole process over, which he never did, and which we tried to explain to the court. At a, at evidently, too, too late of a point for them to hear it, because we have tried everything to get this in front of a judge and have been stopped every damn way, every which way possible. So, you can, so, 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 y'all know how, you know, your nerves get to going up. You can have a smoke, so my man got a smoke over here, so don't worry about that smoke, and you're all right, so don't y'all worry about that. Okay, you just go on, listen to what we got to tell you, though. You don't even see that. You listen to what we got to tell you. You got it? No, 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 no. He okay, man. He all right. So anyway, we got two sides of the story here, and so this is what's going on with this property. So my thing is, man, 
I would say I don't think it's quite fair for me to have to leave a house that is owed me five hundred dollars. Oh, more than that. For a cable bill that 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 I never got paid for. I showed you the receipt. I showed you you the receipt right there. Sure, okay. I showed you the receipt right there that that you okay. agreed to pay okay. me the money. Uh, so. Uh, Uh, we got somebody at the door, y'all. We're going to go around the back because we can't get in the record right now. So we go around the back. We're going to go check it out. I'll finish it there while he goes. But anyway, we got to get this going. Uh, 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 so, uh, so, uh, this is what's going on with this house. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get America to listen to what's going on, our situation. Now, we don't know if you've been through this situation. We don't want you to go through this situation. Nobody to go through this situation. There was no offered help for us to move out. Now I can see if you're good tenants. You're doing good. You know what I mean? You should be offered some kind of help to move out somewhere else. Especially, man, if you're going to pay your rent in October and in November. And then get a third day notice after you pay your rent. Somebody got to come through. Somebody got to come help. This kind of stuff right here is, is, is unhumanized. Not a human being in America should have to go through what me and this man have suffered. And 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 as of let me see, as of the 28th, which is Monday, we have to be out of this house. So. We're going to try to go get another extension, which is only three more days. Well, four more days. Because we need four more days. Because 28th is not going to be enough time to get everything out of here. So this is the situation we're in. And this is the situation that somebody else put us in. We didn't put ourselves in this situation. We should have got some help, at least, to try to move out of here. Or at least offer somewhere to go with not, nowhere, with nothing. <laughs> They just want to put us out there on the street. We're not, uh, we're not people that come from as, the street. As we understand it, the, the, the real so, estate laws are written to, to, to protect the tenants, and we're, we're asking for that protection, but we're not, we can't get anybody to listen to it. We just want what is legally correct and what we owe we will pay at, with this in mind that if we don't owe and she owes, we expect the same thing from her. And by all of our paperwork, this being an uninhabitable place, uh, me having written agreements that if I didn't live at the house she's running me at, I'm due my money. Do all our money back, it, it comes to quite a hefty sum. And this woman is a multimillionaire and has no business coming in and taking all my possessions and, and ruining my credit and sticking me in the street uh, and selling things. And it, we don't even believe that she really sold this place we, because we believe she has investors and, and, and some type of a... She, she's not doing anything legal here, so she's not doing anything legal anywhere. Uh, we have documents that are obviously forged that are u being used uh, in, in title transfers and, and signatures of, of notaries from out of state with her penmanship. We have her penmanship on many things, and that penmanship is the same penmanship that's stating that it's a... a, a a no republic from, from Virginia. And same thing with the people that they're selling, that they're transferring titles from. It, the whole thing looks like a sham of some kind, but we cannot get anyone to look at it the way it's supposed to be looked at and handled. So, me and my man here got caught up in the like a short sale and, uh, and owed money to, and uh, we're going to have to leave this house being owed money to. And we had to go down there and pay money to the court, you know, to stay here. We had to pay this money to the court to stay here a little bit longer because the lawyer that Mr. Uh, Hackman went and signed up for when we got the sermons for the five day to answer, <laughs> we thinking, we thinking Mr. Brady is going to take care of all this because all the paperwork was sent to him. So we didn't have no reason to go down there and answer anything 
Because just like you, don't you depend on your lawyer to do something for you if you got one. You don't have to worry about anything. So by the time we found out that he's talking about he got the paper too late or he didn't get it, we only had two days to go down to the court and file for a stay. So we didn't get a fair chance to even go in there and talk to the judge because the service was already done. We think somebody else is going to take care of this for us. He didn't do it. So, uh, so, so we just caught up in, man, in a situation to where we think we should get an opportunity to go in there and tell our side to the judge. When I talked to Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee told me, Bruce, don't go to Arizona. I could have been in Arizona. I could, this was in January. Man, I could have been in Arizona, married, happy, wow. happy. Well, that's where I'm supposed to be. But no, he's going to threaten me talking about, no, you go down to Arizona, you come back, all your stuff might be gone. I don't want my stuff to be gone. I pay quite a bit of money, but I pay some good money for my stuff. So just like you, you don't want nobody, your, nobody coming in and take your stuff. He told me, oh, I don't know how the law is going to work, so it's not best for you to go down there. Bruce, you go down there, you come back, your stuff might be gone. And I got witnesses. And he hadn't served his any legal papers at that point? None. So I should have went on down there and took my chances of going on down there and coming back, and maybe my stuff would have been gone. Then maybe I would have got an attorney to listen to me. It's like always something got to happen for it before somebody listen to you. And something always bad happened before somebody listen to you. But ain't nothing bad going to happen here. See, because you know what? God sees all. It's all in His hands. You can be the judge on this. What do you think? Do you think we got railroaded? Do you think someone should help us move out of here, offer us some kind of financial help or should we just go ahead out there in the street we're not healthy people I'm not all healthy now I might look healthy but I ain't all healthy he was in a motorcycle accident a year and a half ago I think y'all know all about me oh, well, I so, had three heart attacks and, and need operation well maybe you don't know all about me no you don't know all about me because you don't know see I'm about to be out on the street right now because of somebody else but anyway, but I, maybe I won't be out on the street. Well, that's up to the Lord. But I'm telling you something, man. Yeah, we need you guys. <laughs> yeah, we need a miracle. We need a miracle, and we need a miracle today. We need a miracle by this week. We need a miracle. Now, I hope we was able to get it all out there to you. You know, in a way you can understand it, but this is what we're going through. And I don't know what's going to happen to him. I don't know what's going to happen to me. We might have to end up going our separate ways. Well, and also... But if we do, you got our stories. And we don't want this to happen to you because I know somebody else is in this situation. I know you pan. I know you... You know what? Anyway. If there's any good landlords out there that want two good tenants, we're both guaranteed money with very good records except for this... this but you know... You know... That's right. We pay our rent every month. Uh, see, I can smile. Yay! You know I'm going through <laughs> drama right now. I can still smile. Keep on going. That's you know what I'm right. saying? That's right. But anyway, uh, you might not even understand what we're talking about either, but we got it out there. But I'm pretty sure you got it. Okay? Two different landlords, two different heartaches, two different people that's going through hell, that's been through hell. And they know they put us through hell. They know what they're doing to us. They know they wasn't fair. Mr. Lee, no, he was not fair. Mr. Lee, no, he told me, Bruce, don't go to Arizona. Mr. Lee, no, he could have came back over here and talked to me and this man and worked out some more deals with us where we could get out of here to do it the right way, man. Don't leave us hanging like you did. We didn't hear from you for a whole month, Mr. Lee. And I hope you're looking at this video, Mr. Lee. God bless you. We forgive you. We had no animosity towards you. Yeah. We're not going to leave your house a mess, man. We're going to make sure your kitchen is clean, you know, your floors is clean. But we're not going to be able to get all this furniture out of here because we're not healthy. 
I, we don't we have a no choice. Place. We have no place. To I had nobody help me move, man. I'm, I'm, I'm being serious with you. I had nobody help me move. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, so you might have some furniture left up in here, but it ain't going to be tore up. Um, to, I'm not going to try to leave it a big mess for you, man. We're going to try to clean it up. We're going to try to have it the best way we can in here for you. Because we're not that kind of people. Okay? Now, outside, man, I, can't, I don't know what to tell you about. I don't know about the outside. But anyway, outside is outside. But inside, where we live, we're going to try to take care of the best way we can for you, man. We ain't going to tear up the place. Okay, because I'm going to tell you something, man. Other tenants, man, when they leave their places, yeah, I see some of them places when they leave them places. Man, them places, man, be stacked up with garbage everywhere, especially after what we, after we were treated. So, but you don't go around treating people the way they treat you. See, because God sees everything. So I'm going to do the best I can, man, to leave the kitchen clean. I'm going to try to leave your floors clean. I'm going to leave your bathroom well, clean. we live clean. It's, uh, it's yeah. like that every day. Yeah, because you know when you come over here, the house is clean anyway. Every time the landlords come in, they always come over here, the house is clean. So that's how we're going to try to leave it. Because we got to try to leave a good reputation for myself and for this man right here. There's no bad reputations. Because I, I need a good reference. You understand what I'm saying? You might not be my reference because, you know, I never heard about a landlord kicking you out. I'm going to be a good reference for you. But anyway, that's okay. Jesus is my reference and that's all I need. Amen. But anyway, man, we really God bless you guys. I don't know if anything else my man want to no, say. It's I, all I, we all took off most an hour of you guys' time. And we really thank you guys. Um, we probably couldn't get everything out the way we wanted to, you know, because, uh, 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 but I think we pretty much got it. I'm trying to think of anything else we want to throw in there real quick. Uh, let me see. No. I, I think that's about, I think that's about it, man. Remember the code violations that we had to go through twice. Matter of fact, I went through twice with this woman. In her other house. Yes, twice I went through this with this woman. Twice, okay. Imagine, put yourself in my situation, man. You ain't healthy. The other, you need a place to live. You got to live, so you got to go. So when you trust people, say I trusted this woman. This woman told me, Bruce, you ain't never got nothing to worry about. You ain't got to worry about a place to go. Everything gonna be just fine. This was promised to me. Yeah. Okay. I, this happened to me, man. You know, I had to move again. I'm not healthy. I have to move every year. I'm tired of moving. My body can't take it anymore. I can't take no more moving. She promised me it was going to be all right. We got a violation at this house. Now that means I got to move again. Okay? I, I, told her, so. I told her in my initial interview yes. that I needed a place where I could call home and be at home from yeah. hands on. That I don't like moving. And she assured me that would be the case. And then she brings me into a house that's for sale. That doesn't have cable that I gotta put in my name. Um, and he has a dog! And tells me that I can have a yard sale that she just was. Where's using. the dog? Go get the dog! Go get the dog! Man, go get the dog! We're gonna show you the dog, man! We're gonna show you what we got. What, man? We're gonna. Man, go get the dog! They're trying to make the dog own it, too! Man, I'll take with the dog! They're trying to make the dog own it, man. We put the dog out in the street. Poor dog, man, nice dog. Wait, man, wait, 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 wait till you see this dog. Man, wait till you see, man, wait till you see, man, wait. Where Poochie, man? Come here, man. Man, why? What? What's Poochie, man? We're gonna be Poochie in here. We're gonna be Poochie in here, man. We're gonna be Poochie in here. Poochie, man, you like Poochie, man. See, Poochie gonna take your heart. We ain't gonna take your heart. But Poochie? Look at Poochie! Oh, yeah, Poochie! Ah, look at Poochie right there. Look at Poochie. Look at that Poochie right there. They're making her move. Look at how friendly Poochie is. Poochie ain't evil. Look at Poochie. I ain't gonna put Poochie out there on the street like that. Look at Poochie, man. Hey, Poochie, say hi to the camera. Hey, Poochie. Hey, Poochie. Say hi to Poochie right there. Say hi to Poochie right there. Hey, Poochie. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Poochie, now what's up? Hey, hey, hey. So anyway, we need you guys' help. Poochie needs your help. And, uh... Just take a thought, man. Take a minute and think about what we told you, you know. And uh, do you think we should get some kind of help? Do you think we should get some kind of, some kind of, some kind of compensation for what we've been through? That's all we're asking. You make the decision. We try to, we can't make the decision. Our decision is we need some help. We know what the decision is. And, 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 and do me a favor, too. 
You pray for them landlords that they don't do this to anybody else. To nobody. Anybody else. But anyway, um, God bless all of you. Thank you so much for listening. And I think we got it all covered. Poochie is like, hey, 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 hey. He's like, come on, talk to me. Nobody will talk to Poochie. So you see Poochie trying to get you to talk to him. Say, hey, Poochie. There you go. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank God you very bless much. You. God bless you. God bless you. And now uh, we'll see you uh, hopefully in the near future. And maybe we have a mansion that somebody might just want to bless us with. God going to touch your heart. You're going to be like, get them God in the mansion. Get them God in the mansion. Get them God in the mansion. You know what, man? I'll take a cottage. Give me a cottage. I'll take that. I would. I'd take the cottage. Anyway, God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Peace out. Much love. Bye.